You are listening now to A Word of Faith with Bishop Macedo. Hello, my dear listeners. May God bless all of you in the name of Jesus. And for the honor of His name, we give Him praise. Amen. Thanks be to God. You know, let me tell you something. I am happy. I'm smiling. Because we have... He has so many problems to resolve. And these are problems that obviously brings those sadness in our soul and talking about sadness I know that you who are listening to me perhaps you are sad but you are more sad than, in, and than having joy but the Holy Spirit comforted me He gave me a word that will help you as it has helped me he says like this, Godly sorrow, Godly sorrow, Godly sorrow produces repentance that leads to salvation and brings no regret. But the sorrow of the world produces death. So, if you read this scripture, 2 Corinthians 7, 10, if you read this verse, and I have a comment about this verse, that the, the sorrow, the sorrow, the godly sorrow, it, it's different from the sorrow of the world. Both provoke the sadness, but there is different ending results. What is interesting is that it says godly sorrow, godly sorrow, godly sorrow. And then it has here the sorrow of the world. The Apostle Paul, he was happy, not because he sent a letter to warn the, the Christians in Corinthians, but to know that the content of that letter, there was, it was promoting, the content of that letter was promoting repentance and also the return to the fear, to return to the fear and faith in God. Because when we hear a word, the word of God, if we are sad because God placed that sorrow, He promoted that sorrow in us because of our, our sin or mistake. So then, that sorrow, it's for our own good. For example, if I commit a mistake, if I commit a mistake, immediately, the Holy Spirit that is in me makes me to feel sad. Will make me to feel sad or lost. Will make me to feel agonized. agonized. And this agony, this sadness, this moment of bitterness is God who is promoting it in, in me so that I can beforehand may repent from their wrongdoing and then I can receive salvation. So, my dear listener, you that are of faith, you that are in faith, you that have been living in faith and by any chance you find yourself in agony, hurt, sorrow, you find yourself fallen, your, you, you, you are no longer smiling, your face is no longer shining, your eyes are like the eyes of a dead fish, and sorrowness has taken possession of you, and you do not know what to do. 
Well, this is wonderful. This sadness, this burden that is there, is because you committed this sin. And this sin must be confessed, must be spoken. You have to tear your heart and you have to say, Lord, have compassion of me. I did this, this and that. And if this sin is involved with someone else that was also hurt, so you must confess. You must confess so that you can be free from this sin. God, my dear listener, gives this sorrow so that you can confess and become free from it so that you can be saved. Now, on the other hand, there is the sorrow that the world produces. And what is the sorrow of the world? The sorrow of the world is exactly the one that we are anguish because of the sadness. For instance, you are that kind of person that is in love with someone, but that someone is not right. So you become, you have agony because of that passion. Sometimes it's a passion that is even forbidden. It's a passion that is forbidden. You know that that person is committed to someone and you want that person for you. And that is the sorrow of the world. And this kind of sorrow brings death. It's not a it's not a godly sorrow. The godly sorrow is to bring repentance to you and consequently salvation. And following comes joy when a person confesses their sin, when a person sees himself free, confesses and tells God, so then they have peace. They have peace. And consequently, they assume their faith and confess that they have, they have nothing to lose. So, my dear listener, you who are listening to me right now, wherever you are, if you are a driver, you who perhaps are driving and you care inside this sorrow inside of you, you got involved in a wrong life, perhaps with an affair, and now you are in anguish because you are a person of God. You are a person who believes in God. But because of that woman, this sadness has taken over you. This sadness is God calling you to repentance so that you can be saved. But if you are that kind of person that by any chance you find yourself sad because this world brought this sadness to you, you have desired something that you know it is wrong and you have not yet overcome. So that sadness is going to bring death. So you choose what you want in your life. If you are sad because God is charging you for a position so then you have condition to be free from it right now. But if you are that person that is sad because of what the world has caused, then you are insisting in this situation, you are insisting in this way, in a, in a forbidden love, prostitution, promiscuity, affair. So then I can tell you that that's going to lead you to death. If you want to be free, Friday is the day that we deliver people from all the works of the devil. This world has strained And the 
So if you want to return to the first love, the first thing you need to do is to confess, to free yourself from this evil, this bad taste that is inside of you. You know when we eat something bad, something that's not good, that doesn't go well in our stomach, we feel nauseous, desire to vomit, and as long as we don't take that out from our body, the pain, the headache, the bad feeling stays in. Only vomiting out, the person becomes free. They have to vomit out, release it, and when and once it's not released, cannot be free. The same is with sin. As long as you don't get rid of this sin, as long as you do not remove it, you are going to to be exempt from the peace of the Holy Spirit. And it's going to remain within you. But if you come to God, God will have compassion with you. And you will have then peace. And you know, peace is a characteristic, is one of the characteristics of God's presence in our life. This peace. Peace. 
and joy of the Holy Spirit. We are going to hear now testimonies of what God has done in the midst of us. So pay close attention to the testimonies. You can raise the volume so you can hear the testimony well and see what God has done. Since I was a young girl, I suffered from depression and suicidal thoughts. And as I grew older, it made me become weak. And at the age of five, I suffered from anxiety. And it grew as I got older. I started going through depression. I started having suicidal thoughts. Um, I always got in trouble. Um, I always got, I went to school. I used to get made fun of at home. Family members used to make fun of me. And it just made me recognize my body more and it depression grew even stronger i wanted to kill myself and my first attempt of trying to kill myself was at the age of 13. i took a belt and i hanged it off the bed and i wrapped my neck and i tried to hang myself and was crying and saying god i just want to be with you but instead of me dying the belt broke my second attempt of trying to kill myself. I went to the cabin and I took my family's prescription pills and I took the whole bottle. And instead of me, and I laid in the bed and I just wanted to just die, but instead of me dying, I just threw everything up. Everything that, it just, I just threw everything up the whole night. As I grew older, the depression grew more. I depended on, you know, a relationship to give me happiness. I depended on shopping to give me happiness, but everything was just temporary. I would be happy for a moment, and next thing you know, the, the depression would grow stronger. And I would lay in bed, I would cry. I tried going to a psychic, a palm reader. I tried um, giving myself a spiritual bath, and none of those things worked. I used to manifest with demons for so many years that I became tired. And I said, you know, I just considered that this is how my life was supposed to be. This is how my life was, was meant. When I came to the church, I decided to react and go to war against my problems on the altar. I decided I was gonna participate in the campaign. And I decided that I was gonna do whatever it takes to reverse the situation in my life. I had put my entire salary, plus I sold food, I, I, I sold food, I sold things, and I said, God, this is for my transformation. I knew I needed to pay my bills. I knew that I was behind. I was ready to go to war against my problems, against my situation, against everything that had came against me for 36 years of my life. After sacrificing, I have received peace, I'm no longer depressed. I'm no, I no longer have suicidal thoughts. And I, am in, I have peace inside, internally. I no longer manifest with evil spirits. I am happy and today I am strong. Faith and intelligence go together. Although faith sounds crazy to this world, it's intelligent because it makes us know that we can be happy. Faith also keeps us from accepting a life of defeat and allows us to fight to conquer a life of victory and success. If nothing is going according to plan, it's time for you to use your intelligence and faith to bring to existence the desires of your heart. The Universal Church, a place of faith to change your life. My job, I was suicidal. Um, I was addicted to drugs. I had a failed marriage, and that caused me to be weak. I gave up doing hair to return to school, and I tried to work part-time, and not finding the right job because you didn't have the skill set. People wanted you to have like a reference of working, and I've always worked for myself, so I couldn't find a job. Um, at the time, I was in a relationship. I was married. My husband, at the time, was the provider for the family. And during that marriage, there was a lot of cheating going on. And he cheated on me during the whole marriage. 
And when I got ready to get out the marriage, I didn't have anything to fall on. So that made me suicidal. Um, I wanted to take my life because I felt like my life was ended. I didn't have no outlet, no outreach. I didn't have no one to help me. And that caused me to be weak. The addiction, it was there before and I gave it all up. But when I started to lose everything, I thought that if I go back and just drown it out with drugs and alcohol, that I wouldn't have to worry about my life and where I was going. So I was trying to kill myself slowly. I smoked marijuana for like 25 years. I drank alcohol for 25 years. Um, I took pills for maybe like five years. I was very depressed. I would just lay on the couch. I didn't want to eat. Um, I didn't want to get up. I just laid there day in and day out. There was no peace in my home. I used to leave the house about five or six, go in the cemetery just to find the peace. To be beaten, battered, abused, molested, that's living in hell. Never ever having peace, never finding peace. Um, never having joy, never really um, finding love. That's, that's living in hell. Well, when I came to the church, um, they spoke of the campaign of Israel, and it was more of testing your faith with God. And the campaign I sacrificed, um, I gave God really my all, um, my whole check, which was supposed to win for rent, but I gave the whole check. Um, sold a couple of equipment that we had, and I just gave it all. It was very hard because when I gave the whole check, I knew that was for my rent. I didn't know where any other income was going to come that next month. Um, so it was very hard for me to do, to give that whole check. Because of the campaign, I was able to open up a production company. Um, we were blessed with the equipment to start our business. A wonderful husband. I no longer have suicidal thoughts and I just, I'm just, I'm happy. I'm full of joy. I don't think about any alcohol, any drugs. I don't crave any of that. Um, I just feel strong at this time. Everyone who does not submit to God's word brings to themselves destruction to their life. Even though they have faith, goals, and dreams, if there is no obedience to God's word, they will certainly be rejected by God. God sees the heart and recognizes those who fear him and keep their word. And these are the ones who want eternal life are humbling themselves repents from their wicked ways and seek the throne of grace and mercy of God. The Universal Church, empowering lives with the Word of God. My situation was very bad because I was living in a basement. I lived there for about eight years. So I decided that I had wanted a better living. My name is Patsy Young. The weakest time in my life is when I was living in the basement. And I decided that I had wanted to bring my kids in New York. But I know to myself that it wasn't comfortable for them. Some was sleeping on the floor. We even had to use one bathroom. We have to take turns, you know, in taking our shower and so. So I decided that I had wanted a better living. What I did, I had a little saving, you know. I decided that I would make this sacrifice. But however, I find things start getting up smooth and things working out and I start asking around, see if I can get a better place, friend advising me, 
don't go there to live you can get your own place and this kind of thing so i say look i'll go for it today i have my own house with four bedrooms each one of them have their own bedroom and we are living comfortable they have their own shower i have my own shower and you may even have an extra bedroom too my offering was weak when i arrived at the universal church but today i made it strong on the altar I know that your eyes are always watching over me. And your ears are always eager to hear my prayer, even if I may cry. I know that you are by my side When you are near me I'm never lonely Just as promised You never change God of Abraham God of promise you swore by yourself to change my life I know your word is true for this I trust in you Lord make your words be real in me I know that you're right are always watching over me and your ears are always eager to hear my prayer even if i may cry i know
Hi, my name is Nadia, and this is my story. I grew up in Peru, and by the age of five, an older cousin was starting to molest me. I knew that it wasn't okay. I knew something was wrong, even though I didn't really know what was going on, but I felt uncomfortable. I was irritable. I used to be scared. I used to cry for any little thing. I didn't really play well with others or make friends easily. And then on top of that, my father left Peru to come to the United States looking for a better life. So there's my mom with five of us kids just struggling to make a way. You know, things were not easy for her. It caused more interaction with our family members, so it caused my older cousin to molest me even more, to come around the house more frequently, and for me to just be even more uncomfortable in my own home until the point that a few years later, you know, we were able to travel, my mom and my siblings, to also come to the United States thinking, okay, it's going to be a better life. So in my mind, that was going to be the end to being molested, the family being reunited, a better financial life for us, but that wasn't the case. My parents' marriage wasn't okay. You know, my dad started cheating on my mom. They started having problems. Everything started falling apart. There was no unity in my home. Nobody got along, which caused me to look to fill that void, to look for happiness outside my home. So when I went off to college, I started drinking. I started smoking. I started using drugs. And I went, got into a relationship at a young age and, of course, just ended up pregnant. When I got pregnant, I thought, OK, so this is my chance to start a new life. Since my family is so, everything's so messed up, I'm going to start a new family. So me, my newborn son, and his father are going to make it now. But that also didn't happen. You know, within nine months of him being born, we split up. You know, he also started cheating, which made me completely distrust men be completely heartbroken. And then when my son turns one year old, he gets diagnosed with asthma and not seasonal asthma. It was really bad case of it where we were in and out of the hospital. I mean, once a month we were in the emergency room and he would get really strong medication. They would give him steroids and the doctors would say that it would help him for in the meantime, but in the long run, if he didn't improve, that it was going to stunt his growth that it was going to you know, inhibit his immune system and could lead to even more problems. So there I was in the hospital with co-pays for the emergency room visits, with premiums for his medicine, and I couldn't even afford it. I had a bachelor's degree in industrial engineering and I was making minimum wage, so I couldn't afford the medicine. On top of that, while I'm in debt, while I'm in misery, I go to the doctor myself and find out that I have precancerous cells in my cervix, that there's no medicine that they could give me, that all they could do is monitor it until it becomes cancer. And that was my breaking point. That was when I started to contemplate suicide. You know, I would actually plan out how I was going to kill my son and then kill myself because I had no hope because I didn't see a way out out of the misery, broken love life, and just completely destroyed life. And it was then that my mom invited me to come to the church. So I accepted her invitation and I actually started participating. First of the Friday services, I was taught how to do strong prayers, how to fight back, how to have hope, how to believe in a God who was real and could really change my life. And that's exactly what happened. I started seeing the changes, first with my health, the precancerous cells gone. They did test after test and nothing. They completely disappeared. My son was no longer in and out of the hospital. He could play sports. He didn't have to depend on medicine to be able to just do something as simple as breathe. Everything started changing. My finances, I was able to get a Immediately, within six weeks, I was able to get a job earning at least 50% more than what I had been making before, what had taken me two years to find coming to church within six weeks and putting into practice what I was learning. I was able to just take off. It was promotion after promotion, you know, just better things, a better life. 
even with my family, there was unity, where there was no communication, where there was just fighting. We'd actually sit at the table and have a meal and able to share. You know, I'm actually able to afford vacations without getting into debt and enjoy, enjoy the work of our hands. Today, I don't have to go and get drunk, go and get high to escape my reality because I am happy, because the life that I have is filling.
even when I'm suffering, when my problems are coming, I never destroy. I'm never destroyed. 